Hanımlar, cenaplar, televizyonun ve basının değerli temsilcileri böyle güzel bir sonbahar gününde Bakü'den olmaktan büyük bir mutluluk diyorum. Ee, i̇zin verirseniz ben yabancıları dikkate alarak konuşmamı İngilizce yapacağım ama e, Azeri kardeşlerimi bu sözlerle bir selamlamak istedim. Tekrar buradan olmaktan büyük mutluluk duruyorum. Well, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants. Well, it's wonderful to be in Baku in such a nice and beautiful day of September. The beginning of October, actually. Now. I've been keeping to come to this country from the beginning of 1992, which is 16 years. And one thing I'm witnessing each time I could see big progress in this country. I think the young generation in this room, they wouldn't know what was Azerbaijan would look, would look, like, look like beginning of 1992. It was impossible to have such a hotel or conference room in this country. I think I remember the road between the airport and the city. You could go through different <laughs> region of the Baku. It was very, very difficult days. No one would believe that Azerbaijan will come to this point in a very short time because 16 years in the life of the country is a very short period. I would like to congratulate the leader of Azerbaijan. They have done an excellent job, but the only thing they need, and we need, and the world need, to have peace and stability, the southern Caucasus, to the problem between, problem of Nagorno-Karabakh. Well, the Center of Strategic Studies under the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan continue to provide a learn platform for delving into challenge of strategic importance in the global affairs. I congratulate the director of the center, Ferhat Mamadov, and his, and his capable staff, and thank to the people of Azerbaijan and President Ilham Aliyev for hosting this activity. This conference is convened to address the most sensitive, daunting issue of our times, separatism. In part, due to the process of globalization resulting in enhanced awareness of ethnic minority group rights, we are witnessing a growth of separatist tendencies and movement, movements in many parts of the world. They challenge the territory, territorial integrity and sovereignty of the states of which they now constitute a part and thus pose, pose a formidable ch challenge to the inter international order as we know it. Indeed, there are few states that are spared the challenge of separatism or its different manifestations. Separatism is not an easy subject to deal with, whether in theory or in practice, because the views of those who, demand, who, who demand it and the views of those who deny it are generally diametrically opposed. In my Brief remarks, I shall not go into specific or particular cases as it will be done by renowned experts later today in this room. I shall draw some broad lines of pursuit for our discussions. First and foremost, I want to underline the fact that the fundamental problem we have, we have is that there are no universally, universally agreed upon and accepted definition of the basic terms that dominate debate 
in international relations. Terrorism and self-determination, both germane to our discussion here, are two prime examples. Even after years of deliberation at the UN and elsewhere, there is still no fixed definition of terrorism. Those who are terrorists for some are freedom fighters for others. This continuing ambivalence and ambiguity still undermine the fight against terrorism in many parts of the world. The same applies to the right to self-determination employed by separatists as justification for their demands. To quote Patricia Carley, an expert in this domain, from her 1996 book titled Self-Determination, Sovereignty, Territorial Integrity, and the Right to Secession. She says, Confusion over the issue stems not so much from whether there exists a right to self-determination, which is included in many international human rights documents, but from the failure of those documents to define exactly who is entitled to claim this right, a group, a people, or a nation, and what exactly the right confers. The confusion still pers exist, persists today. But that is, it may, it is also a fact that the self-determination -determ concept and its attributes have themselves evolved and changed over time. It has confirmed to the changing dynamics of the international order. Already enshrined, enshrined in the UN Charter at its foundation, it serves as a broadly accepted key reference that led to the independence of many territories, territories under the colonial rule in Africa in 1960s, marking the end of classical colonialism. Today, however, we face a different state of affairs. The difference is the rise of ethnic and religious separatism challenging the territorial integrity of existing independent states across the globe. Violation or denial of human rights and religious freedoms by minorities are generally the reasons tabled to de for demanding the right to self-determination. There are also instances of economic disparity between the regions of given country, with some regions doing much better than others, generating a desire for some degree of separation on the part of the richer parts. I don't want to go to the, exact, to the very example. For example, Italy. North Italy saying that we are rich. Why we are going to support the South Italy? We have to be some kind of autonomy or independent. This is case in many countries in the world. Today, federal arrangements are usually viewed as a temporary substitute for eventual separation. In the absence of clear guidelines for meeting or countering such demands, however, the end result is generally violence, whether in the form of terrorism by the demanding side and suppression by the denying side. Of course, the exec exception to the rule of violence do exist, but they are far 
too few to account. The velvet divorce of Czechoslovakia in the two, into two states is still the only major important example of the nonviolent separation in the world. When I look into the future of international relations, I sense more trouble, more violence, and greater demands for self-determination. Why? Because the global dynamics that are surging in our times provide abundant fuel for separatist demands. Populism, racism, xenophobia, religious phobia, whether Islamic, Christian, Judaic, or Buddhist, and anti-immigrant, anti-refugee sentiments, poverty, and various forms of deprivation are increasingly polarizing all societies, East and West, North and South. A corollary development that widens the space for violent separatist tendencies is the globe erosion of democracy and the rule of law. This is taking place in even the most advanced societies in the, in the West, including and perhaps most particularly in the USA. The global trend towards less democracy and more authoritarianism exacerbates the frustration of minorities, propelling, propelling them to flirt with demands for self-determination. Because I think now the world is facing, democracy is facing with crisis. I would say that democracy now in crisis all over the world, including in the United States and many countries in Europe and so on. So what are we to? Unfortunately, not much and nothing concrete in the short run. The global turbulence driven by all the negative trends I referred to earlier is like, likely to continue for some time to come, with separatist tendencies becoming not less but more frequent in the meantime. It is therefore time for the UN and other international fora to review the issue and come up with new ideas and guidelines to process demands for self-determination. In this connection, the paramount consideration must be the avoidance of violence. Self-determination is a fundamental right, but it must be exercised peacefully and by legitimate means. It should not be viewed as a black and white or winner takes all issue, neither by its proponents or by its opponents. It should always be the subject of progressive and genuine dialogue. And for that reason, I think this conference is its timing is very important because uh, my personal view that this trend will continue to be worsened in the many parts of the world. And if we allow every religion or every minority to have their own country or independent states, I think the world will not be manageable at all. You could have thousands of countries in the world. And I think UN should be more active and other international organizations must, be, must do more. Well, I'm very pleased to be in Baku again, and I think this conference will serve not only the people 
in this country, but to region and to other part of the world. For example, this region is one example now that since the 90, beginning of 1990s, this, the situation in this country, in this region, South Caucasus, is getting worse. For example, uh, we had in, in, in Georgia two new states not being recognized by anybody as such just Russia. And nagorno karabakh issue is one of the important frozen con conflict in this part of the world. And the international community, UN, OSCE, or other organizations, should be able to find, to be more active, try to find a peaceful solution in this part of the world. I'm very pleased to be here, and I congratulate the, uh, actually this, the, the, the organization again, and the, and the lead, and the chairman, and all others. Thank you very much for your patience.